Five trophies in one calendar year, over 100 appearances in just over two years between the sticks. Sander Westerveld remains Liverpool's most decorated goalkeeper of the 21st century. I'm Guy Clark. Welcome along to the Blood Red channel. Having played in all but two of the Reds' 63 games en route to their historic treble in 2001, Westerveld was a key member of Gerard Houllier's side straight from the off after arriving at Anfield in 1999 from Vitesse Arnhem in the Eredivisie. As well as looking back on that memorable treble winning season, we were able to catch up with Sander here on Blood Red. And over the next 45 minutes, he recounts his time at Anfield, the highs, the lows, the trophies, the tears. Here's what happened when we caught up with Sander Westerveld on the Blood Red channel. This is the Blood Red podcast from the Liverpool Echo. Sander, first of all, uh, thanks for joining us on the Blood Red podcast. How are you keeping? Um, I, I must say I, I'm, I'm, I'm fit and I'm healthy, so uh, I, I can't complain. But uh, I must say I'm pretty bored uh, at the moment. Um, everything I do uh, is related to football. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's not really uh, cracking at the moment for me. And uh, if you're not a football player, everything is very quiet. So um, it's pretty boring. But uh, like I said, uh, it's a luxury problem. And um, there are people with uh, more difficult situations. So I'm not, I'm not complaining. Yeah, we're going to look back on, obviously, your time at Liverpool, primarily that treble winning season where every cup competition you guys were in, you seem to take home the trophy. But before we get into that season, I want to sort of take you back to the start of your, your Liverpool career in the summer of 1999 when you arrived at the club. And how proud were you to, first of all, sign for the club? And what were the, the emotions for you? Was it nervousness or excitement? Because I think you came at the time for what was then a, a British transfer record for a goalkeeper. Yeah, it was. Um, and I must say, and I hear it often, uh, sometimes I'm not true, but with me it was. And everybody, all my friends and family know that Liverpool, from uh, when I started uh, um, looking at the BBC, the road to Wembley um, in the, yeah, the 80s and the 90s, when I grew up uh, watching football, it was all Liverpool all over the place. And it was my club. And, um, yeah, after a couple of good spells in Holland, um, when they, um, they, they came to my house and, and told me that they, um, yeah, they were interested in signing me. Uh, that was just like, a, like I was living the dream. Um, I was super excited. I never felt the pressure of uh, being the, 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 the most expensive goalkeeper in, in, uh, in history. Um, I used to change that around and, uh, and, and make it something positive. So um, if somebody was paying so much money for me, um, they must feel that, uh, that I was doing something good. So uh, there was all confidence instead of pressure. And um, yeah, it was like a, like a dream come true. That's what I, uh, I always say. Yeah, big time for you as well, because it was around the same time you'd made your international debut for the Netherlands as well, wasn't it? Yeah, I was uh, like they say, I was flying at the moment, and everything went uh, went in the right direction. I was making steps every year, um, coming from Twente, making a step to Vitesse to be the number one for three years, uh, being chosen uh, Player of the Year, and then uh, signing the contract uh, for Liverpool. Um, actually, in this in the in the hotel uh, at the airport uh, in '99, uh, all my way uh, to make my debut with the national team. So it was just one amazing week where I just like I said got a trophy of uh, best player uh, on my way to the airport uh, signing the uh, the deal with Liverpool and then uh, a couple of days uh, later making my debut in, uh, in the national team against Brazil in Brazil uh, it was just uh, like I said uh, cloud nine living the dream it was all like uh, amazing times yeah, I imagine you must have been pinching yourself. And yeah. when you arrived at Liverpool, it was it was during a time really of a bit of a rebuild for Gerard Hooley. I think it was going into, of course, his first full season in charge. You arrived as the goalkeeper, Sammy Huppier and Stefan Oncho as well in front of you. It was really sort of building from the back first, and you guys did fo did form a formidable sort of trio there in in that back line. Yeah, it was like a, a puzzle that, uh, that 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 all fell together. It was um, yeah, we had a couple of missing links. Um, where you normally have the missing link, we we I think we signed eight new players and they were building a team. Uh, gave us a lot of confidence, saying like um, yeah, we were struggling in defense. Uh, yeah, we have to uh, tighten up the defense and uh, yeah, 
of course, with Stefan Henschel and Sami Hüppia in front of me. Um, I think from the very first uh, day, it just uh, gelled together. And uh, um, yeah, we were best defense, uh, least goals in my first year. And uh, yeah, it was just uh, it was just amazing to play with those uh, two players in front of me. Yeah, looking at the defensive record, obviously, whilst you were at Liverpool, the two sort of full seasons you had there, you did have a very strong defensive record. And I wonder just, we always talk about with defensive units and goalkeepers and centre-halves that it takes time to build that partnership and how important it was having that first full season together before then, of course, in the cup competitions, going so well as you did, having had that time to sort of all gel together. Yeah, I think in, in football, the most important thing is uh, obviously besides talent and, and work rate and discipline and mentality, it's, it's, um, it's confidence. And um, you need a manager and you need um, yeah, to have confidence for your, from yourself as well. Uh, you have to build your confidence. And then I think with confidence, you can, uh, you can get the levels you, you – yeah, the 100% levels you can, uh, you can get – um, I think, from like I said, from the very first uh, first game, we really gelled together. We were playing well, and uh, it gave us a lot of confidence to play uh, uh, that season. And uh, yeah, with the least defense to to build on uh, on on uh, for the next season. And I think we were making steps every year, and getting better and better. Um, yeah, like I said, the, the first year we tightened up the defense, uh, and then the second year, yeah, it all fell together. We had a perfect balance in the team. We had top strikers, great midfielders with Stevie G coming uh, coming through the ranks, and and experienced players with uh, 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 McAllister and and the lads of uh, all the, the Germans that 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 won uh, uh, the big trophies in the past as well, uh, which yeah made us a team that uh, that was in balance and. Um, yeah, that's why I think we were successful in the second season. Yeah, you mentioned the strikers there. I'm, I'm sure in, in training it must have been some job for you going up against the likes of Michael Owen and Robbie Fowler day in, day out. But um, going yeah, on to... I remember yeah, the first uh, couple of days when I arrived at Liverpool. It was just, uh, yeah, like I said, I was on cloud nine. I just made my debut in the, in, in, uh, in, in the national team. So uh, I, I wasn't arrogant, but I came with a lot of confidence. And uh, that confidence was, was, I think, very quickly uh, shot, shot and destroyed after a couple of training sessions with, uh, with, uh, with Michael and Robbie, uh, those players. And I must say, I, I haven't seen any, any of them in my 20-year career, uh, any talent like them uh, anywhere else. Uh, maybe Van Nistelrooy, uh, Ruud Van Nistelrooy came close, but in the box, uh, Michael Owen, one-on-one, -on -one, with a goalkeeper, I never saw him missing a one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, Robbie in the box, whenever he touches the ball, he just put it anywhere he wanted. And uh, finishing was just an unbelievable uh, level. And uh, yeah, so it was it was just, but it took me to another level as well. And I could raise my game and uh, learn from that and uh, yeah, be a, a better goalkeeper as well. But it was just uh, yeah, an amazing uh, set of talent we had there. No, I, I bet, I bet. And going into that treble winning season then, of course, the, the new millennium comes in. It had been 10 years since Liverpool had won a league title. That was obviously always the focus at Liverpool. But you were in, of course, these three cup competitions. What was the atmosphere like around in pre-season of heading into that season? As I say, I'm, I'm sure the target would have been maybe to try and close the gap to Manchester United and Arsenal. But you must have fancied yourselves for at least one of these cups anyway. Yeah, I think from the very first moment, uh, the gaffer told us that it was the closest uh, or the, 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 the easiest way to, to get into Europe as well. Uh, even the League Cup, I think at that time, uh, the European football, uh, or still have. Has. Um, so, yeah, uh, Liverpool had to, uh, to, yeah, to get back to the top. And uh, being at the top means winning prizes and getting into Europe, playing European football every year. And... Um, yeah, that was our goal, oh, and I, I think my first year we uh, we qualified for Europe, and um, yeah, and then from the very first moment we we played the League Cups. Uh, I think uh, playing the League Cup, um, I think the League Cup started there yeah, before the FA Cup. Um, yeah, I think the, the the success in the League Cup gave us the confidence to uh, yeah to to, to to we took that confidence into the European Cup and uh, and uh, the FA Cup as well and. Uh, Winning all those games, 
playing with uh, with with two teams or three teams together. I think um, our biggest success was uh, the fact that we were um, we were a big big squad and uh, we could change the team every week. Uh, we had the back four maybe the, the back maybe with Stefan and uh, and, and Sami playing every week. Um, we we could change the whole team and still be strong. And that's why I think we could play so many games. I think we played 65 games in that season. Um, but yeah, we were living on, uh, we were playing on confidence and winning all these uh, cup games. And uh, like I said, with the manager saying that it was the closest or the the, the, the fastest way to uh, to Europe. Um, yeah, that was really to give us the 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 yeah the, the mentality to uh, to take every um, every game by itself and. Uh, Every every game by step by step, um, yeah, concentrating on one game, and that's why it was difficult in the in the in, in the league because you got so many games. And the, the mentality is when you go away, uh, you always can lose a game, and then uh, yeah, you can make it. Maybe you can win at home, and then you can draw away. And it's a long season, but the cup games is just a mentality like a must-win game. It's one-off, must-win, and I think that was. Um, that suited us. Uh, the way we played and uh, the mentality in the team was uh, it was more a cup team than uh, than a league team, I think. Yes, yeah, certainly. As you say, you played over 60 games that season. I think you played in all but two of them, the first two League Cup ties. And we best talk about the League Cup and the League Cup final in particular, of course, against Birmingham City. How fondly do you look back on that game? Because I don't know if assists sort of have been registered at that time. I was watching the, the highlights for it back and I couldn't decide for Robbie Fowler's goal, whether from your long kick forward, your trademark long kick forward, whether Emil Heskey got the flick on or actually whether it was your assist, Sander. I must say it was my assist, but uh, <laughs> to be honest, um, it was just our style of, of, of playing. Uh, I was well known for the way I, I well, I was I was a modern goalkeeper, they, like they say now. I was playing from the back. I could play with my feet um, and I had a long kick. So it was just um, yeah, a good combination. So if we wanted to play from the back, I was the extra uh, field player, the, the 12th uh, player maybe, or the 11th uh, field player. Um, but then in, in difficult uh, situations where they put a lot of pressure on me and uh, on the team, I could uh, play the long ball to Emil. And Emil was so strong in the air or could hold the ball. And then uh, Michael or Robbie could play off them, uh, off him. And um, yeah, that worked in that, uh, I think it was early in the, in the game already, uh, after a long ball for me and uh, a flick on from, from Emil and an amazing goal from Robbie. Um, I think um, that game was, I think, the most important game of the season uh, afterwards. Uh, at the moment, it was not just, it was, it was the final, the first final in 10 years, I think of some, uh, a long time at least, uh, the first time they won uh, a trophy again. And that was, uh, yeah, that was our, our goal as well. Like, okay, we have to get back winning uh, for Liverpool and uh, this is the first opportunity, let's, let's get it. We didn't play a, a, a good game, probably. We were maybe uh, uh, a bit nervous because there was so much pressure on that game to win. Um, but at the end, uh, yeah, for me as a goalkeeper, it's, it's of course, it's the, the best way to win a cup is with penalties. Uh, and then, yeah, saving two penalties and the, the decisive one at the end. Uh, yeah, for me personally, it was, uh, it was just, uh, yeah, the best day of my life. And uh, like I said, the most important one because it was the first trophy after so many years. And I think because of that experience of winning that final, and approaching the final and the way to the final and everything around the final um, gave us the experience and, uh, and, and the confidence to, uh, to win all the other finals as well. Yeah, do you think in some ways, as you say there then, it's maybe sort of one of the forgotten, I suppose, moments for Liverpool, the reawakening almost of this sleeping giant, as it were, in terms of collecting trophies that you were taken to penalties, albeit by a first division side in Birmingham City. But if you look forward, not only in that season, you go and win two more cup finals, certainly in adverse conditions against Arsenal in the FA Cup final, but yeah. also sort of even further down the line for, I suppose, the career of players like Steven Gerrard <clears throat> and Jamie Carragher. They have Istanbul where they come back from adversity and obviously win that final on penalties as well. I suppose that really was the catalyst, that game for Liverpool returning to winning so many trophies. And we've you to thank, Sander. 
Well, yeah, well, yeah, thank you. Um, like I said, it was just uh, the only thing a goalkeeper can do. And uh, everybody always talks about penalties and how is it to, how's the pressure? Are you nervous for penalties? But uh, it's the opposite for goalkeepers uh, because you can't go wrong. Um, nobody blames the goalkeeper if you lose on penalties. You can dive uh, every time the wrong way, probably, and they still won't say anything. Uh, of course, you uh, if you lose a couple of times uh, in a row, but um, I think um, we have a good record with Liverpool goalkeepers of uh, winning on penalty shootouts. Um, so, yeah, you, you can't go wrong. And I, throughout my whole career and also before that game, I was well known for, for my penalties as well. I, uh, I used to save a lot of penalties. And um, so, again, it's all about confidence. And, uh, yeah, if you, you have a lot of confidence and, um, yeah, and having a couple of uh, uh, techniques that work during uh, shootouts, then, of course, you can only be the hero. And uh, fortunately for us, um, yeah, also the penalty kicks uh, you, you can save three or four penalties, but you need the, the, the penalty takers as well to uh, to clinically fl- finish. And I think see if you um, um, I'm, I'm still keep laughing about uh, Jamie Carragher's uh, penalty, but um, if you see the penalties we took was just unbelievable, left and right, uh, top corners. And uh, I think uh, Jamie Carragher made a run from halfway line, and uh, I was I was looking and almost putting my hands in front of my face, but. He smashed that ball home with so much confidence. And uh, that's what you needed. And you could see, um, I think it was Johnson that missed. If you can see him uh, walking off to that ball, uh, you could see he was nervous. nervous. And um, if you see our players, our players came with a lot of confidence and put the ball where they wanted. So, yeah, it, it was just a, a, a perfect afternoon. And I suppose all helped with the fact that, if I remember rightly, you had the Liverpool fans behind you, didn't yes, you? Yes, definitely, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's always it. That gives me a big, big, big boost and makes it even more difficult for uh, for the opponents. So, uh, yeah, imagine walking 50 metres and uh, everybody's booing, booing and whistling. You can see the whole, the, the whole red uh, wave behind you, behind the goal. And, uh, yeah, it's not, it's not easy for you then. No, certainly not. We best talk about the other finals. And quite often, a number of the players from that squad sort of say, not that it was a divide in the dressing room, but ahead of sort of the season starting, you'd have the European players wanted to win, obviously, the UEFA Cup. And the FA Cup meant so much to the domestic players. You've spoken yes. so fondly there about the League Cup. But was there a preference in the dressing room for what you did? Or was it just, we, as you said before, in Cup games, we want to win every game. It's knockout football. No, that's that's for sure. And even with the domestic games, uh, domestic people, or the English and the the Scottish, and uh, uh, of course, uh, when we play the European games, uh, they wanted to win the European Cup as well. And uh, it was more that it was afterwards. Uh, I remember well when I was sitting in the uh, in the in the coach um, after the European Cup game against Alaves uh, with the cup, and. Um, I think I was sitting next to Robbie. I was just walking past Robbie. I had the cup in my hands and I was like, this is the best day of my life. This is the biggest. And he was like, oh, come on. He said, uh, we already won that one. It was the FA Cup last week. And uh, so that that's said enough. Uh, we were, as European players, uh, watching the uh, the FA Cup and the road to Wembley, like I said before. Um, but uh, yeah, the German Cup and the Spanish uh, Cup and the Dutch Cup it's it's like an extra cup and it doesn't mean so much of course everybody wants to win cup but the way the fa cup uh, the importance of the fa cup i think it's 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 yeah probably uh, the champions league is bigger uh, that's what they said and then you have the the, the uefa cup at that time um but um, i'm just very proud and happy that uh, i was able to win all of them and uh, so so i can never nobody ever has to uh, Ask me, oh, wouldn't it wouldn't be nice to win the, the, the FA Cup or the, the European Cup. Or... No, this, this is the best way. So for the European players, it was the, uh, the UEFA Cup. And for the, the English players, the, uh, the FA Cup. So uh, everybody was happy at that time. But I mean, before games, we never had that feeling. We never uh, were in a dressing room like, oh, this is only the Europe- European Cup. So uh, everybody was really focused. And um, yeah, like I said, fortunately, we, uh, we won all of them. 
Yeah, I was going to say, you, you sort of got it spot on there, I think. It's it's good to have the argument after you've won all the trophies and go, yeah. oh, well, which one was the best one to win rather than actually having having not got there? I suppose you've got the medals that you can just sit back and look at all of them at the same time with a yeah. great big smile on your face. No, that's it. And then uh, maybe the Germans and the, and the, and the Dutch like me, we we have the UEFA Cup uh, or the, the European Cup in the middle and then the FA Cup and the League Cup slightly behind it. Uh, in in the in the the trophy cabinet and uh, the English they 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 mix it around so that's the only difference I think but uh, no like I said it's just uh, amazing that we uh, we we made history and uh, won all of them. Yeah, best to ask you about the UEFA Cup and the final. Of course, nine goals in it, four against. But looking at your run to the final, absolutely extraordinary. That that was sort of how the game played out. Because I think after the first round, the the first leg of the, the third round game away at Olympiacos, where you drew two two, I think you only conceded one more goal at home to Roma. Obviously, having won the away leg all the way up until the final. You, of course, kept two clean sheets home and away against Barcelona, as you did against Porto as well. It was a run that was really built off clean sheets. And then the final was just absolutely madness. Yeah. And then looking back at all the finals we played, I don't think we uh, we had one. Not in, it's never easy. But uh, like you said before, against the first division team, our champion, uh, championship team uh, like Birmingham, uh, finals are always uh, different and difficult. And, um, yeah, we made sure that we made it, all the finals very difficult. And uh, I think, the, 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 the well, I wanted to say the best one. It's, for me, it probably is the worst one uh, in terms of goalkeeper uh, conceding four goals. Um, it, was, it was just a difficult one. We were cruising. We were, we were flying. We were, I think, 15 minutes. We were 2-0 up and 3-1 at half time, and, and people were already in the dressing room talking about uh, the party afterwards, and I think we took it too easy uh, in halftime. Uh, I remember the manager all year was was really uh, putting us under place, like, okay, we have to really focus. The first 50 minutes are important, and um, yeah, that that's we, we didn't do that. And within five minutes, uh, it was it was uh, all square. It was three three already, um, and then it it was a difficult game. Uh, still, I think there wasn't. A minute where we didn't have the confidence that we were going to win it. Um, I think if you see the game, um, the first half, I think it made one or two saves. Um, they had one chance and they scored. Uh, after uh, in the second half, they they, they scored twice, but they, I don't think they came close to uh, scoring another one. And uh, we were. And then Robbie scored the four three in extra time. I think it was just before time. Um, yeah. Uh, we made it difficult for ourselves. Uh, I tried to make it a little bit more uh, exciting to concede the last uh, last one in the exit, or almost in the 90 minute. To uh, I, I was just thinking, if I ever play a European Cup, I might as well uh, play 120 minutes, and uh, or I was just uh, hoping it will be uh, decided by penalties again. And, uh, you wanted to be the hero from the spot yeah, again, yeah. I had that feeling from the from the League Cup, and I uh, wanted that feeling again. But uh, no, I, it was even so that I I forgot about the golden goal as well. I remember uh, Gary Mack put the ball in, and uh, the, the guy had it, made it an own goal. And I remember turning around to the to the fans; they were in my back. Uh, well, to be honest, uh, I think they were everywhere in the stadium. Liverpool supporters took over the whole stadium. But uh, I remember turning around and. Like really, like celebrating with the fans and then talking to myself, like okay, I'm never gonna give this away now, and this is ours now. And then I turned around after a couple of seconds and I saw everybody in the in the in the left corner, so far away. So I had to make the longest sprint sprint in my life, but uh, I forgot about the golden goal. But at the end, uh, it's 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 all about the end. Uh, you can make, uh, you, you can be the better team. Uh, you can be the, 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 the even the FA Cup. I don't think we afterwards. If you if you look at the game again, I don't want to say we didn't deserve it, but uh, I think Arsenal had more chance of winning that game. Let let's put it that way. Um, and but but it's at the end. Yeah, we were the ones with the trophy, and uh, the same at all of us. I think before the game and during the game, we 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 were the better team, and. Um, we deserve to win that game, but we really made it difficult for ourselves. And uh, but then afterwards, uh, yeah, yeah, I can look at the pictures with the cup, and I can uh, look at the medals, and that's the uh, that's what counts. 
And afterwards, of course, you come back to Liverpool, you have the bus parade and what, what brilliant scenes they must be. Yeah, and then, uh, it was really strange as well because uh, we weren't supposed to uh, celebrate uh, even after the, um, the FA Cup. Where, well, this is really, really funny and strange because I remember the Germans uh, had a go at, at the gaffer about uh, like, no, no, we have to uh, enjoy the moment. We have to celebrate because you never know what's going to happen in the next game. And uh, Olier said, no, no, I have a glass of champagne. We'll toast. And then it's off to bed and uh, focus on the next game because we had on a Saturday, we had the FA Cup. And then we were the day after we were in the plane uh, to Germany we, because we had the UEFA Cup, I think, on a Wednesday or something. And then after we won the, the UEFA Cup, uh, we wanted to have another party. And uh, they said, no, 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 Saturday is Charlton away. The first time in history we, uh, uh, we can qualify for, uh, for the Champions League. So that's the most important game of the of the of the year, and uh, yeah, we went uh, to bed again early, uh, played that game. Fortunately, we won, and then it, uh, we had the party. And uh, yeah, I, uh, I was on the coach uh, on top of the the bus, and um, I recorded. I had a video camera with me, and uh, I still uh, watch the uh, watch the video sometimes. And it's just uh, yeah, you can't explain the, the the feeling you have as players. Um, looking at uh, maybe because it was so long ago that we were winning trophies and uh, you could see it in the faces of all the people and uh, that's really why we play football as well uh, people talk about the money people talk about uh, yeah, this is this we if you see the faces uh, of the fans and uh, to make the fans happy after so long uh, that was really I saw old people uh, crying uh, and 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 it's so much happiness and uh, yeah that that's 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 so rewarding for for football players and uh, I think it was the best feeling of my life. Uh, afterwards, some Liverpool players had uh, had um, the luck of winning the Champions League and I think it was even a bigger bigger parade. But uh, yeah, no, it was the the best moment of my life. And you you football say life. that. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah, you, yeah. Get that one in there um, before anyone overhears. But you, you say that was the best moment of your your football career, your football life, and obviously that was a day you didn't even play football on that day. And obviously Liverpool have now ended this wait for the Premier League title. Obviously the situation we're in, we can't have a parade. Yeah. But as a, as a former player, how heartbreaking is it that you can sort of see all of the work that's been put in by Jurgen Klopp and his players and know that they, they don't have that moment as much as it's for the fans. It is for the players as well. You do enjoy being on that open top bus and, and sharing the moment with the fans. No, of course. And uh, as a football player, like you said before, it's um, especially for me, I'm not sure about the, you always have some players that, that play for money, but for me, I play for, for legacy and for, uh, and and for the people and for myself as well, uh, for that feeling of winning and uh, winning trophies. And uh, when you look back on your career at the end, you want to see the trophies. You want to see the legacy that you left behind and making history. And um, for me, and I um, I said it um, in an interview in the Legends Room, uh, um, I think it was um, one of the, 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 the league games uh, last year. Uh, I had an interview um, on stage and um, yeah, Hobala and uh, Ray Clemens were there, and they were asking me about my my best time at uh, Liverpool, my best day. And I said, well, the best thing about Liverpool is that it's difficult to make history. Uh, you can win a league, you can win a Champions League, uh, but then we, we won six and we won nineteen leagues. And um, to make history like we did in that year, winning the treble and even winning five trophies in one calendar year. Yeah, that makes me so proud of being history at Liverpool, making history and being part of history of, of Liverpool. And that's why I think uh, you play. And that's why it's so difficult now that finally, after so long, uh, you win the title and you're, you're not able to celebrate it uh, with the fans and to show the fans and show the trophy to the fans. And uh, yeah, that's, 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 I won't, maybe it's too much if you say it's heart, heartbreaking, but. Um, uh, it's not the same. Um, Jurgen Klopp says anywhere in the season when it's when it's possible, uh, we'll try and do it again. Uh, hopefully, the, the the players will have the same fee the feeling then. Uh, some players left, but um, I think uh, yeah, sharing that moment with the fans is just the most uh, most important. And uh, yeah, I was so. Oh, oh, 
yeah, like I said, the heart bro broken when 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 you see the the, the, the cup when you the, when they gave you the cup, uh, the league title uh, at Anfield, and you can't share it with a full stadium. Look at the images in uh, in Madrid when they were sharing the Champions League and and singing "You Never Walk Alone" in front of the fans. Yeah, those moments uh, you will never forget in your life. And those moments we had when we did it, we did the same with the treble. Um, yeah, we were fortunate to have the fans there, and uh, it's not the same. But at the end, uh, it's like Jurgen says as well. Uh, it's the league title. Uh, looking back at, uh, at your career, you can say you won the title with Liverpool and you won the Champions League, and uh, hopefully uh, this year, yeah, they can win the league uh, with the fans again and uh, and make it up for for last year. Yeah, certainly hope that is the case. That, of course, a massive high. And I suppose after that, the next season comes around and it's not the greatest start to the season. I think you went away, obviously, on international duty, didn't you? And Gerard Houllier signs two goalkeepers on one day in Chris Kirkland and Jersey Dudek. How frustrating, disappointing, upsetting was that that maybe, I suppose for you, you would have argued if one had been signed, you would have had competition there and could have maybe forced your way back in if one had signed as the, the number one. But when two arrive, I suppose that must have been deeply upsetting. No, of course. And uh, yeah, I can't say anything else. Uh, we were talking about uh, making steps. And I think in my first year, we were at the least defence um, or the least goals, the best defence. And uh, that's what they were asking uh, from me. Um, I was 24 at the time. Uh, in the second year, um, yeah, we were playing better and better. We were winning all the cups, like you said. We we were keeping clean sheets. I think I kept clean the 29 clean sheets in the, in the two years, uh, the two seasons I played. Um, of course, I made mistakes, like everybody did. Um, but if you look at my mistakes when I made them, uh, I never uh, lost uh, many points for the team. So at the end, uh, it was I think harsh. Um, I felt that I was making steps. Um, we played the Super Cup against Bayern Munich and then a week later or a couple of weeks later we had uh, the Man United, uh, the Charity Shield. And um, I think I played my best game for Liverpool in that, uh, in that game. I was voted man of the match. We won 2-1. And um, yeah, I was, I was flying. Uh, even the, the, the biggest critics of the BBC, uh, Mark Lawrence, and, uh, they, they, they were praising me. And like, OK, finally, uh, here we go. We've got a goalkeeper for the next 10 years. And... Um, of course, I, I, there were rumours about getting a new goalkeeper in, and the manager, Julier, um, told me that he would uh, or he wanted to bring in a, a, a competition as well. Um, but then, yeah, going away um, um, with the national team and then uh, on the last day of the transfer deadline, seeing that first uh, they buy Kirkland and then I remember Ophemars and Bergkamp uh, told me like, hey, you see, it's nothing to worry. The body, a, a young goalkeeper. So, uh, yeah, uh, up you go. You can just uh, stay the number one and they got a young goalkeeper for the future. Uh, but then uh, I think five or six hours later, they bought uh, Dudek as well. Yeah, and then your whole world falls apart. Uh, I think, uh, like I said before, and I was telling you before, Liverpool was my dream club. Um, if it would have been any other club, club I would say, Ah, man, crap, but this is football. And, uh, okay, off, off we go. And a uh, new challenge, and I'm leaving. But it was my club. And, uh, and again, I thought it was, it was, it was a bit harsh. Um, yeah, if they wanted competition, they could bring one goalkeeper in, but not two. And uh, from number one, winning those prizes, to the first Champions League we played, I wasn't, in le I wasn't, uh, I wasn't even uh, allowed to... Uh, to go with the team as a third goalkeeper. So, for men of the match, uh, number one, winning uh, five trophies in one year to be number four, for me was, uh, yeah, a hard uh, and bitter pill to swallow. And uh, also the, the timing, the last day of the transfer deadline. So, I couldn't go anywhere else. And I had to stay. And, uh, yeah, the only thing was uh, I had to be professional and, and train and then uh, wait for my chance. And um, my chance never came. Uh, obviously, and uh, I had to leave in uh, in December. Uh, that was the only club that was uh, interested in me at that time. Um, after not playing for for half a year, and uh, Toshak took me, and uh, yeah, that was my uh, that was history uh, made. Yeah, no, as you say, very very harsh, very bitter pill to swallow. Because in 
two full seasons. You made over 100 appearances, as you say, won so many tournaments as well. But what is it nowadays that you're up to then, Sander? Yeah, I just quickly had to have to add as well that uh, yep. it, it took me a couple of years. Um, like I said, I was a young goalkeeper and uh, I, it, it was just a big thing in, my, in the back of my head. And uh, uh, I, I, it was difficult to cope. So I was walking around with it, with disappointment for years until um, I think it was my wife or anybody else told me like uh, um, I was I don't want to say hate but I was really disliking uh, Julier at the moment for making that uh, that, that that choice um, but then um, yeah I changed it around and uh, and said we, I have to be grateful for him uh, to sign uh, he signed me for Liverpool and uh, like I said it was my club. And uh, he was the one that gave me the opportunity to uh, to, to win all these uh, trophies with Liverpool. So at the end, uh, I'm just grateful for him to uh, um, yeah to sign me for for my club and to be able to uh, to make history and play more than 100 games for the for the team. So um, I think it was at a charity uh, game uh, for the tsunami when I first uh, met him. And uh, yeah, it's it's no hard feelings. Uh, at, uh, at this time, so it's it's all good, but uh, I'm still not happy that I uh, had to leave. No, I, I bet not. And actually, just on that point, and I suppose the the mental aspect of being a, a footballer, because quite often your stars, your pin up, you're on a pedestal. People sometimes think get you, you and that you are people at the end of the day and of course you, I suppose you see it right now there's always on a goalkeeper it always seems to be intense focus Alison Becker of course is injured right now Adrian's come into the side and immediately he makes an error against Aston Villa and immediately all the spotlight is turned very brightly on him yeah and I I, I always say that I think that live, the, 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 the position of a goalkeeper is the most difficult position uh, in the team uh, the striker, obviously, the story. Everybody knows the story. The striker can miss open chances, miss a penalty, and uh, then just uh, score the goal, a tap in in the last minute, uh, and then we win the game one nil. And he will be in the front on the front pages, and uh, he will be the hero and uh, the one that won the game. And nobody looks at the clean sheet you uh, you had in the back. And uh, on the other side, if you um, if, if you make a mistake and you lose the game, it's it's always you. And sometimes um, it, it's it's just true. It's like uh, yeah, if you're not focused and um, you make a mistake, yeah, and you lose the game, then you have to put up your hands and say, okay, it's my mistake. I lost the game, but it won't happen again. Or I will uh, get the points back uh, next week. But I think it was um, it was a bit harsh on, uh, on Adrian. Uh, I think he played uh, he played some great games uh, when he came in uh, for Ellison. Um, I remember the, the, he, he saved us. Uh, oh, what was it? The charity shield. I think one of his first games uh, where he yeah, won the, the, cup. the the super cup. Yeah, yeah, the super cup. So um, yeah, of course um, we considered the first goal. It was an error. He will know uh, it was a mistake. But um, we never we never lost that game because of the first goal. Um, I think it was in the first half, early in the first half, and uh, we considered uh, early goals uh, before. But we we had uh, the mentality of coming back. But this was just uh, uh, I think almost everybody played uh, played always uh, always uh, under his level. And uh, but then again, uh, yeah, conceding seven, uh, you will always look at a goalkeeper, and uh, he won't be happy with his performance. But uh, he was unlucky as well. I think three or four were deflected uh, deflected uh, uh, goals. Um, but. Yeah, that's the life of a football player uh, as a goalkeeper. Um, sometimes you're the hero, sometimes you're the villain. And at this moment, uh, it's a difficult time for Adrian. Fortunately for him, um, yeah, it's not a one-off. So he's got uh, three or four more games uh, to play. So, um, yeah, he's got uh, all the chance to, uh, to make it right. Yeah, be before we go, you've been very generous with your time. Brilliant to, to speak with you in such depth um, about your time at Liverpool. But just wanted to sort of get your thoughts on Jurgen Klopp, the job he's done. And we mentioned <clears throat> Alison Becker before. From a goalkeeper's perspective, just quite how sort of great you think he, he is and what, what more could he sort of go on to achieve as a goalkeeper? Well, first of all, I think Jurgen Klopp. Um, I I I put a tweet out. I made a tweet when uh, we signed him. Uh, was this four years ago now? Um, 
And I said, this is the best signing in the last 10 years because I knew his work. Uh, I followed the German uh, Bundesliga and I knew what he did at Mainz and at Dortmund. And uh, I was super happy when he, uh, when he came because it was something totally different. And I think he would, uh, his style is like, um, I, I, I like Pepe Guardiola. I like the way he plays football. Uh, not uh, Mourinho when he comes. It's, it's super defensive. I like to play football and I like the attractive football. And um, I knew he would change uh, Liverpool and the style of, of playing. And uh, that's what he did uh, in the first couple of years. They were still criticizing him. And uh, all the, all the uh, coaches were getting more points, I think, at uh, uh, at the same time, um, so they were comparing him with this, uh, the other coaches. But at the end, I think he uh, he deserves all the credit. Uh, him and his team, he turned, I think, the whole, uh, everything around Liverpool changed it with him. Uh, the way we play, and it's super offensive, and it's the high pressure, and it's the, it, it attracts players as well. And uh, yeah, I think it's, we're back where we wanted to be, uh, one of the best clubs in the world. And uh, I think it's not only him, but almost only him. Uh, yeah, that, that, that did it. And uh, then you need, uh, obviously, a, a good balance in the team. I think the last couple of years, we had a good striker who was scoring a lot of goals. And we didn't have uh, the, the great defense. We didn't keep so many clean sheets made be as we sh- supposed to, as good te- teams do. And, um, yeah, when we signed... Um, uh, Allison, I think that was the the missing link. Uh, then later with Van Dijk, obviously, that was just uh, yeah. Now it's all we, in every position in the team. I think we have one of the best players in the world. And uh, if you think and tick boxes, um, like what is your ideal goalkeeper? I think um, Allison almost ticks all the boxes. He's he's great with his feet. He's like a football player, so you can you can use him as an extra defender. Uh, he's got a great uh, reflex. He's fast. He's quick off his line. One on one, he's great. Uh, off his line, he's, he's uh, commanding his, his, his area. Um, coming for crosses, um, the, the counter attacks, his kicking is unbelievable. And um, yeah, his presence. I like his presence. Uh, like you have Neuer, who's the perfect goalkeeper for me still, and uh, and Testegen probably uh, quite similar. But then, uh, yeah, what, what what Allison has is the presence, like a big guy, and uh, and then yeah, as a if you want to be a top goalkeeper, um, you need to make that uh, that match winning saves, and I think Allison proven uh, over the years, uh, the maybe the biggest example is the one uh, against Napoli, uh, where yeah. In, 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 in times where you need a goalkeeper, he stood up and made that save where everybody was saying, like, how, how is this possible? Uh, that's what you need. And uh, that's what he gives it at the moment and hopefully uh, for years to come. And uh, so uh, in that aspect, uh, I think, uh, yeah, he's one of the best in the world. Yeah. Yeah, he certainly made goalkeeping stylish and sexy, almost you could say as well. Everybody sort of clamouring to sort of proclaim him, as you say, there as one of the world's best, if not the world's best. But before we go, I must ask you what you're up to these days as well. Um, I'm still involved in football. Um, obviously, with my experience, I want to uh, yeah bring my experience and, and, and give it to, to the younger players and hopefully help uh, younger players as well. Um, but I never wanted to uh, be a goalkeeper coach at a, at a club. I've got four children at the moment, uh, all playing football. Um, so I want to enjoy yeah, the family as well. So at the moment, I'm doing a little bit of everything. I'm a goalkeeper coach at the national team, under 17, under 18. Um, I'm working for world coaches for the federation. Uh, that uh, yeah, We travel around the world uh, giving clinics, uh, uh, Cape Town, uh, South America, uh, India, Indonesia, everywhere. Um, I'm um, working for uh, commentating. I do commentating, especially for Liverpool games um, in in the East for Astro Television in Malaysia, and sometimes on the pitch. I play games for the Liverpool Legends all over the world, and uh, I'm super excited about that. Um, and um, yeah, I'm part of the the yeah the the, the Red family the. Uh, the legends and um, yeah, hoping to be involved in, uh, in in the future of Liverpool as well. 
Um, so, yeah, a little bit of everything and um, hopefully I can continue this and maybe in the future I can be a goalkeeper coach at a club when the when the kids are big enough. But uh, at the moment I'm doing all these bits and bobs and uh, enjoying life. No, great to hear and great to catch up with you here on the Blood Red channel. And I have to say thank you once again for your time. It's been absolutely brilliant to speak with you. Thank you. Good luck with the programme.